As always, FOSS developers are terrible at naming things, but that's besides the point. Nginx is the backbone to large swaths of the internet. The numbers are a little bit wonky to get, but it's usually estimated a bit over 30%. A lot of tutorials out there just assume you're going to be using Nginx and don't even mention anything else. But over the weekend, there was a little bit of project drama. Now, whilst the core project is licensed under a free software license, BSD2 clause, and here is the repo over on Mercurial, it's not just developed by a bunch of random volunteers. Instead, it is operated by a company called F5. And over the weekend, one of its core developers, Maxim Donan, sort of reached a bit of a tipping point, and this happened. Announcing FreeNGINX.org. As you probably know, F5 closed the Moscow office in 2022, and I no longer work for F5 since then. Still, we've reached an agreement that I'll maintain my role in Nginx development as a volunteer, and for almost two years, I was working on improving Nginx and making it better for everyone for free. As we'll see in the log, he shows up three weeks ago, go back a bit further, he shows up right here, and various other points, you'll see a lot of work from him being done. Unfortunately, some new non-technical management in F5 recently decided that they know better how to run open source projects. In particular, they decided to interfere with security policy Nginx uses for years, ignoring both the policy and developer's position. That's quite understandable. They own the project and can do anything with it, including doing marketing motivated actions, ignoring developer's position and community. Still, this contradicts our agreement. And more importantly, I am no longer able to control which changes are made in Nginx within F5 and no longer see Nginx as a free and open source project developed and maintained for the public good. As such, starting from today, I will no longer participate in Nginx development as run by F5. Instead, I'm starting an alternative project which is going to be run by developers and not corporate entities. That being freenginex.org. The goal is to keep Nginx development free from arbitrary corporate actions. Help and contributions are welcome. Hope it will be beneficial for everyone. Right now, the website is basically just the Nginx website. Obviously, with information stripped out, there doesn't need to be here, like all of the old news. Here, we only just have 2024. And various things like the documentation literally just point to Nginx documentation. The download just points to old Nginx downloads. Right now, there isn't a free Nginx release. And don't get me wrong, that's not a bad thing. Just because there is a fork, it doesn't mean you have to completely reinvent the wheel. If you have a working website, you might as well just keep using the working website. Doing no research and taking this completely at face value, this sounds really bad. It sounds like a corporate takeover, which nobody wants to see happen, especially for a project that's as important as Nginx. But when he says, decided to interfere with security policy, what does he actually mean by this? Well, someone did ask him exactly this question. Would you be able to, within reason, give any examples of these? Which he did reply with. The most recent security advisory was released despite the fact that the particular bug in the experimental HTTP3 code is expected to be fixed as a normal bug as per the existing security policy. And all the developers, including me, agree on this. And while the particular action isn't exactly very bad, the approach in general is quite problematic. Now, without specific details, this is really hard to comment on. Luckily, someone from F5 gave those specific details. Most of you have probably seen a CVE before. These are used to indicate various vulnerabilities in various different important projects. Now, much like the curl project, F5 is now what is known as a CNA. These are the entities that actually assign these different vulnerabilities to a project. And when you become a CNA for your own project, you can be in a position where you are the only organization allowed to publish vulnerabilities for your specific project. Obviously, different entities can tell you about a vulnerability, but you are the one responsible for actually reporting them to the public. Now, over on Hacker News, an F5 employee chimed in on the situation. We, F5, published two CVs against Nginx Plus and Nginx OSS. 
Maxim was against us assigning CVEs to these issues. Remember, a CVE is some sort of vulnerability in the project. F5 is a CNA and follows CVE program rules and guidelines, and we will err on the side of security and caution. We felt there was a risk to customers slash users, and it warranted a CVE. He did not. The two CVs in question are 2024-989 and 2024-990. Now, whilst the descriptions are exactly the same, these are two separate CVEs. If you go down to the hyperlink section, the link right here does take you to a slightly different page. But that's not the point. The point is what this is actually about. When Nginx Plus or Nginx OSS are configured to use the HTTP3 QUIC module, undisclosed requests can cause Nginx work process to terminate. And note, this is the important part that Maxim had an issue with. The HTTP3 QUIC module is not enabled by default and is considered experimental. So this is in development experimental code that is not enabled for every single user. This is where it starts getting really weird about whether a CVE should or shouldn't be used. One user says, QUIC and Nginx is experimental and not enabled by default. I tend to agree with him here that a work in progress code base will have bugs that might have security implications, but they aren't CVE worthy. Basically, if something isn't shipping out to the user, yeah, it's going to have bugs. That's why it's not shipping out to the user. Assigning a CVE to work in progress code just doesn't make any sense because you just have hundreds of CVEs just being made that are getting fixed the next day. Now, the F5 employee disagrees here. We know a number of customers and users that have code in production, experimental or not. And that was part of the decision process. The security advisories we publish do state the feature is experimental, as we saw right here. When in doubt, err on the side of doing the right thing for the users. I find that's the best approach. I don't consider a CVE a bad thing. It shouldn't be treated like a scarlet letter to be avoided. It's a unique identifier that makes it easy to talk about a specific issue and get the word out to customers and users so they can protect themselves, and that's a good thing. The question I ask is, why not assign a CVE? You have to have a solid reason why not to do it, because the default is to assign and disclose. I don't think having the CVE should reflect poorly on Nginx or Maxim. I'm sorry he feels the way he does, but I hold no ill will toward him and wish him success seriously. You can see there is this clear separation here where one person is like, hey, we're going to assign the CVE here because we know some of our customers are making use of this in-development feature. Whereas Maxim is saying, no, don't assign a CVE to that. It's in development. We know it has bugs. Assigning a CVE is just a waste of everybody's time. I can see where both people are coming from here. Now, some other users chimed in as well. For what it's worth in my project, the main reason we don't issue security advisories for unsupported code, experimental, or tech preview is to reduce the burden for our downstreams. Many of our immediate downstreams are expected by their users to apply every single security patch, regardless of whether they even use the affected functionality. For cloud providers, doing this across a massive fleet, this is a fair amount of work that's worth avoiding if we can. On the other hand, since the definition of supported is specifically designed to help downstreams, if it were known that some bit of code was widely used in production, we'd be open to declaring it security supported, regardless of whether we thought it was finished or not. Basically, if people are using it, then we'll assign a CVE to it if there is a problem. Recently, I had to support a client who had a no CVEs in production deploy ever policy. The stack included Linux, Java, Chromium, and MySQL. God, that is definitely not going to happen then. <laughs> it took multiple person years of playing whack-a-mole with dependencies to get into production because we'd have to have conversations like, client, there's a CVE in this module, us. That's not exploitable because it's behind a configuration option that we haven't enabled. Client, somebody could turn it on. Even if they somehow did and nobody noticed, they would have to stand up a server inside your VPC and connect to that. Client, well, what if they did? Then they'd already have root and you are hosed. Client, but the CVE. Us. <laughs>
<laughs> so I definitely appreciate any vendor that tries to minimize CPUs. And I've heard this story many, many times before. And once again, I get it from both sides. Developers don't want to deal with clients that just have these insane demands regarding CPUs. But F5 wants to do the correct thing by their users and make sure every vulnerability is being reported. I get it. It's a really difficult situation. Honestly, I don't know who is in the right here. I do think that if this is the only thing that happened, forking the project might be a bit of an extreme approach. But I have a feeling there are other things that are not being mentioned by anybody at F5 or Maximum himself that sort of lead up to this situation. All we can go by is what we can see. And from what we can see, I don't really think a fork makes the most sense. Now, another concern you might have is about this name. Free Nginx from Nginx. Isn't this just like a lawsuit waiting to happen. Now, Maxim did comment on this as well, and the TLTR is, uh, he disagrees. The free Nginx name expresses the goals of the project very well, and therefore, I would like to preserve the name as is, even if it implies some risks. I am not a lawyer, which is always a good way to start. I might get sued. But, from my understanding, the name Free Nginx is sufficiently different from the Nginx trademark F5 has, and there is quite similar precedent in the past, the FreeBSD project and BSD trademark. Look, we'll see how that goes. I would be very surprised if they did file a lawsuit, that would make them look really, really bad, and actually would get a lot of people talking about this project. I would imagine they just let him do what he's gonna do. If F5 will nevertheless decide to make a legal action against the project, rename the project would always be an option. Honestly, I think renaming the project now is probably a good idea. This name is kind of an SEO nightmare, because if you're looking up free Nginx, you are looking up free, as in the word free, Nginx. So the free version of Nginx, which is Nginx. There's like two versions. There's like a paid corporate version and then the free open source version. So you are sitting under the main project's name. So you've got to somehow do your SEO in a way that gets your project more exposure than the bigger project that has 30% of the internet. I don't see how you do that. Whilst there has been a bit of popular tech news coverage, I don't think it's going to be enough to carve out your own little niche when you're sitting under a name like Nginx, especially when Free Nginx doesn't have its own proper Free Nginx release. The only releases are the existing Nginx releases. Now, there has been another response from both Megazone, the guy we saw over on Hacker News, and also from F5 themselves. This is over on Ars Technica. From Megazone, it's an unfortunate situation, but I think we did the right thing for the users in assigning CVEs and following public disclosure practices. Rational people can disagree, and I respect Maxim for his own view on the matter, and hold no ill will toward him or the fork. I wish it hadn't come to this, but I respect the choice it was his to make. And F5's response is very, very corporate response. F5 is committed to delivering successful open source projects that require a large and diverse community of contributors, as well as applying rigorous industry standards for assigning, I've never seen this word before, and scoring identified vulnerabilities. We believe this is the right approach for developing highly secure software for our customers and community, and we encourage the open source community to join us in this effort. As I've said, I don't know the correct response here, and I don't think F5's inherently in the wrong. I have a feeling there is a lot more going on in the background, and this was just the final straw that broke the camel's back, because this by itself seems very, very minor. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrubs, Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and make sure you update your servers. What?